Today we are at the Mountain Springs Trailhead um, on Highway 160. There's Potosi Mountain. And I guess how to find this trailhead is uh, look for this. On the left side of the road as you're leaving Las Vegas area. Here's Highway 160 and here's another sign. The only other sign you're gonna see is uh, there's your welcome sign for the Mountain Springs Trailhead. Okay what we're gonna do today is, and, and by the way here is the Mountain Springs Trailhead. A few parking spots. Okay so what we're gonna do is take the um, Rainbow Mountain upper crest ridge line. There's a ridge line that leads above the Rainbow Mountains, which is which um, is composed of the mountains that you're familiar with if you've been in Red Rock Park, Mount Wilson, Rainbow Mountain, Bridge Mountain, Juniper Peak, um, and the uh, Rainbow Mountains actually begin in this area. This is the southern tip of the Rainbow Mountains and um, and they extend all the way through to the um, the far end of Red Rock Park. So uh, what we're going to do is take this ridge line that spans the entire length of the Rainbow Mountains from south where we are right now to north um, the end of Red Rock Park, and uh, we're just going to document each of the mountain peaks and take a look at what it would be like to descend to those peaks. People are familiar with ascending the peaks, but we're going to look at the possibility of descending to the peaks, uh, which in some ways is easier um, then ascending, you don't have to deal with brush and a lot of rock climbing, but on the other hand, the distances are great. So uh, we'll just look at those. We'll document the, the various peaks uh, along the ridge. Uh, some of them, I know the names. Um, some I do not know what they're called, and maybe they don't even have names. We don't know. Anyway, we're going to document those peaks and here at the trailhead, what I want to point out is there are basically two um, roads that lead off. There's one that, that leads toward the ridge line on the left here, and there's one on the right, um, just to the right of the beast. And if you take the left approach, they both go to the same place. In fact, they both end up at this communications tower, which is the landmark for the, the real beginning of that trail that leads up to the ridgeline. Uh, it starts right behind this communication tower. So just a quick note, if you take this road to the left, You'll get there, but it's going to split in about, I don't know, 500, 800 feet. It's going to split. Take the right split when this road splits, and you'll end up at the communication tower. If you take the left split, I don't know where you end up, but it will slow you down. Take the left, take this right road here to the right of the beast. And it's going to end right up at the hill up here. And you'll just do a quick cross-country um, trip. You'll be able to see the tower from that hill and just head straight to the tower. There's a little use trail. That's the way I'm going to go. It's more direct. So anyway, yeah, you're at the Mountain Springs Trailhead. And there's Highway 160. And here is the left road and the right road. And I'm taking the right road. Here we go. 
I am at the top of that first hill and you can see the beast right down there. So I haven't gone very far, but as I said, from the top of this hill, you can see the communication tower, which is our landmark. Trailhead begins behind the communication tower and then heads for the ridge up there. So we're gonna just head straight for the communication tower and there will be a um, use trail that leads across this intervening space. So here we go. Okay, as I mentioned, this little road ends right about here, but there is a use trail right down through this little gully that heads straight up the communication tower. That's what we're taking. Just to give you a quick look at where we are now. Neat thing about this experience is that you rise up very quickly. We'll be looking down on all this in just a few minutes. And as I said, this little use trail um, meets up with the other road you could have taken if you took the left approach road from the Mountain Springs Trailhead. And now we're back on that main road, heading for the communication tower. And uh, the route I took, I believe, is the most direct route, but it doesn't matter. They both lead to the same place. Here we are at the communication tower, and where we're headed is just to the left of that hill, which is... Um, about the beginning of the Rainbow Mountain Upper Crest Ridge. And to get there, there's actually a very nice trail. And it's right, it begins behind the communication tower. You just squeeze around this gate. It's not actually much of a squeeze. And I'll show you where the trail begins. Okay, here we are behind the communication tower. There's the gate we just passed. And right ahead here is the beginning of what is actually a very nice trail. Maybe we can call it a roadlet because it's actually as wide as this road that I'm on right now, but it's blocked off. Um, evidently at one time it was a road, but as you can see, it's no longer used as a road, but this is the nature of the trail, which is pretty awesome. There's the communication tower and we have already ascended about 300 feet from the uh, trailhead. So as I said, and you can see Highway 160 behind and then looking up here, you can see Potosi Mountain. And as I said, we ascend very quickly. Yeah, we're 300 feet above the trailhead and what we're heading for now on this really nice uh, trail um, slash road is the Rainbow Mountains Upper Crest Ridge Line and it begins, there's the south end right there and we will um, summit that ridge line uh, just to the left of that hill and then of course the rising sun makes it a little hard to see what's ahead but uh, we will be then taking a left and taking the ridge line from there. So um, here we go up to the ridge line. Okay, we have just topped the ridge line. We're on the summit of the ridge line and there's the direction we're going to head. But before we do that, I just want to document every part of this ridge line. And the ridge line actually begins on this hill to the right. And there's a, a kind of a peak below the hill 
Um, that's the, actually the first peak, or maybe we could call it a peninsula <laughs> or a spur um, because it's not technically a peak. There is Windy Peak, and yes, it is uh, very hazy today. So sorry about the quality of the pictures we're going to have and video on this hazy day, but we're still going to do the ridge line. And I'll point out as much as is visible. So let's go up to this hill, which is the southern tip of the ridge line. We'll look down on that first peak slash peninsula. Okay, here we are at the very southern tip of the Rainbow Mountains Upper Crest Ridge Line. And you can see the ridge pretty much ending here. And there's Highway 160 below us. We've ascended probably uh, between six and 700 feet already. And let's get the perspective here. There is Potosi Mountain across Highway 160. And looking down in this direction. Um, yes, here is that tower, communication tower. Right below us. shows you how quickly we've ascended. I'm around 20 minutes from the trailhead, which is down at Highway 160 around that area, right down there. Mountain Springs Trailhead. And then looking off in this direction, yes, in the haze, um, there is Griffith Peak. If you can see it, I can hardly see it due to the glare on my screen and the haze. But um, yeah, that high point around the center is Griffith Peak. And then looking south, you can see how the ridge uh, continues. And um, yes, it's, it's a series of high points. And so um, it's going to be not a straight line like it looked from below, but it's going to be up, down, up, down, rolling hills on this ridge line. And we'll go either for five hours or until we hit a, um, a drop off that just stops us. I'm hoping we don't. Um, okay, and here you see Windy Peak in the haze. And what I want to point out is here's that first peak or peninsula in the Rainbow Mountains. So this is the southernmost peak. And I don't know the name of it. We'll just call it peak number one. And where I can name them, I'm going to name them. And Windy Peak is actually peak number two. So Let's descend back down to the Upper Crest Ridgeline Trail below and then head up the ridgeline and just see how far we can get from this southern beginning at the uh, Mountain Springs Trailhead onward. Okay, we are approaching the um, the second high point in this ridge line, we were just standing there. And the reason I stopped here is that now you can see a little more of the approach to uh, peak slash peninsula number one in the Rainbow Mountains, and there's a better look at it. Um, as I said, this ridge line is. Um, it is not an even um, line like it like it appears from the bottom from below um, and these high points are as much as 100 to 300 feet up <laughs> from the last high point so if you add all the ascent from the high just from ascending the high points on this ridge line uh, you'll equal 
um, over a thousand, maybe even two thousand feet uh, very quickly. And this is the second high point up here. And just a quick note, the um, temperature in the Las Vegas Valley where I left Centennial Hills at about 2,000 feet was around the mid 70s and um, if you take away five degrees for every uh, thousand feet you ascend um, right now we're um, closing in on 800 feet ascent um, from the trailhead beginning and and in on Mount in Mountain Springs and um, the differential between Las Vegas Centennial Hills and where we're standing now is around oh, 4,500 feet. So um, understandably then it is around 50 degrees here as I stand and so that helps you to determine when you can be in these areas. You don't want to be up here um, at this lower altitude in the summer where the Las Vegas Valley is uh, 110 degrees. It'd be too hot up where I'm standing. But um, here the last weekend in May, um, I'm in 50 degrees right now and It'll probably warm up to 70 by the time I'm through with this adventure along the ridge line. But just to give you an idea of what you experience at different altitudes, again, it's about five degrees per thousand feet elevation gain. You lose five degrees. And um, that's a good rule of thumb as you're thinking, shall I? attempt a certain um, hike in the Las Vegas area. Just subtract the number of degrees and uh, from where you are at the altitude in Las Vegas and you get an idea of what things will feel like where you're intending to hike. Here we are approaching a second high point on the ridge line and what I want to point out here is that here is the split off to Windy Peak. To the right, you're going to head around the um, right side of this ridge below the rising sun and right into the rising sun actually. And you're going to head to Windy Peak. Or you continue along the ridge line to the left. And then to give you a perspective where we are, there you can see the, the ridge line ahead. We have probably ascended um, oh, about 800 feet by now. And here's the trail that I've been on along the ridge line. And um, there is Potosi Mountain. And below, directly in front, is that um, high point we stood on. A moment ago that then um, led down to peak slash peninsula number one and there is a shot of the little ridge that goes down to that peninsula that would be the first um, Jurassic peak in the Rainbow Mountains and so instead of going to Windy Peak and you can look at the Windy Peak page on Las Vegas Area Trails where we took this right split in the trail and headed to Windy Peak. Um, that's all documented. We're continuing on now on this Upper Crest Ridge Line Trail. Here we go. Okay, continuing along the ridge line. Um, this is what's ahead, uh, another high point. And looking around, the reason I stop here is that you can see some of the Rainbow Mountains in the distance here. But 
here straight ahead. We'll get better pictures in the afternoon. I'll circle back on the way back because this is looking right into the sun. But here is peak number three. And then looking around, you can see the very tip of peak number two, Windy Peak. And then continuing around just to get an idea where we are. There is the trail we just traversed. That's going south. And here we are continuing north up to the next high point. So we'll go up there and see what we can see. Um, there should be visible a few more peaks in the Rainbow Mountains. Okay, continuing on. As we get closer, I called this peak number three. Actually, I guess if we're to be entirely accurate, peak number three would be down below, but wow, that looks like class five, um, unless there's a, an approach that is um, easier, <laughs> we, we may see at some point. But yes, then um, here is Windy Peak. You can see the very tip of Windy Peak. And then here is looking south. We just came from that high point to the south and there's Potosi Mountain. So it gives you perspective where we are and a unique look at some of the Rainbow Mountains that may be a little less familiar to people. And by the way, this um, lower peak that is more of a uh, semi-vertical climb, at least looking from this direction, um, I, it reminds me of Juniper Peak in Red Rock Park area. Okay, so there's peak number three and then, or now it's four. <laughs> and then here is, uh, or a few more up ahead and we'll see as we continue, we'll count them. Let's continue on up to this next high point. We'll get a much better perspective. Okay, from this higher perspective, um, there's Potosi Mountain. There's the high point we were on uh, a little earlier on this ridge. And now we can see the first four peaks. So here's the tip of peak number one. And here's the tip of Windy Peak. Peak number two. Here's the tip of that shorter but more vertical peak. Number three. And then we look over at peak number four. And in the distance, you can see some additional peaks, but I'm not going to number them yet because there might be something hidden in between as there is right here. But yes, if you were to attempt to ascend peak number three down here, it's looking pretty vertical from this perspective. We'll continue around on this trail this ridgeline trail and get a better perspective where maybe we can see an approach to peak number three. Definitely peak number four. Looks like it's got a very clear approach line. Although <laughs> there may be some broken up cliffs and drop-offs. All it takes is a vertical 
10 to 20 foot drop off to end the adventure for this trail runner, non rock climber. So yeah, let's continue on up along this Rainbow Mountains Upper Crest Ridge Line. And hopefully we'll be up on this area not too far from now. Here we go. Okay, this little peak number three. One thing I want to point out is now we can see a what looks like an approach from below to where we stand on this ridge line. Um, yeah, yeah, it looks like the whatever that um, channel is down there that then circles around the left side of that peak would be an access to the valley below. We don't know. And here's peak number four. And here we are continuing onward. Another high point on the ridge line, looking over at Potosi Mountain, and then over this direction toward Windy Peak, and then here is another shot of peak number four. Number three is um, hidden at this point. And then here's the ridge line continuing. Uh, this looks like a great viewpoint on a clear day because we would be looking straight at, in this direction, we'd be looking straight at um, Griffith Peak and Mount Charleston. But as you can see, um, the visibility is really bad today. And circling around back to Potosi Mountain. One thing about this little ridgeline trail is that it is a kind of destination all of its own. There's a rugged look to it, very beautiful, and definitely on a clear day, um, boy, the views would be amazing. And what we'll do is after we have done this overview today of the ridgeline, in subsequent adventures, what we'll do is take each of the peaks that we've looked at, except for maybe that little vertical peak number three, and summit the peaks and um, just get, hopefully it'll be a clearer day. You'll be able to see all this along the ridgeline more clearly. Okay, higher perspective. There's Potosi Mountain straight ahead. Here is the Upper Crest Ridge Line Trail for the Rainbow Mountains. And from this point, you can see peak number one. Peak number two, which is Windy Peak. Peak number three, which would be this, <laughs> maybe we'll call it impossible peak, <laughs> at least for me. And then here's peak number four, which looks like it might be doable. But as you can see, as you get closer, some of those, um, some of those cliff-like looking um, rocks could be um, just adventure enders for anyone that does not have experience in rock climbing. And then here's looking ahead along the ridgeline trail. Pretty nice trail up here. And then Again, some of the beautiful rock formations along the way, which give this uh, ridgeline trail very unique, beautiful experience just to be 
on the ridge line and imagine this on a clear day. Okay, back at Potosi Mountain, looking south. Another point of interest coming into view as you look west from this ridge. Um, there you can see down in this area, and yes, it is very faint, is Highway 160, and we're looking straight down on Lovell Canyon. And then there is Griffith Peak and Charleston Peak. And we'll see these later, um, maybe on clearer days, definitely. But yeah, we are skirting um, the edge of Lovell Canyon at this point. Okay, onward. Point is a great perspective of the Rainbow Mountains upper crest ridge line and what you can see, some of the peaks. And of course, we're looking at Potosi Mountain. And then down in this direction is the southernmost peak of the Rainbow Mountains, peak number one. Here's a great view of peak number two, Windy Peak. And then if you include this next one as a peak, um, yeah, I don't know. That could be a question, but it's um, at the base of Windy Peak. And it does look like it could be its own peak. That would be peak number three down there. And then we look over in this direction. And here is peak number four. And yes, it looks like the approach to peak number four is anything but even. Um, yeah, maybe class three, I bet. I would bet you're gonna hit some class four sections before you get to that peak, number four. And now coming into view is peak number five. And again, I don't know the name of these peaks, but around the corner, we begin to see some familiar peaks in the Rainbow Mountains. So let's take a look from that perspective. As I mentioned there's peak number five and let's go around the corner here. It's gonna get a bit windy. And ahead, you can see familiar peaks. There's Indecision Peak. And just north of it is the very familiar Mount Wilson. So, um, and then you look at the terrain here. Wow. Um, getting to Mount Wilson from this point <laughs> along the ridge could be a little problematic. But we'll see. Here we go. And from this perspective, peak number five, two peaks after Windy Peak, is, you know, looks approachable. It looks like one could actually head down this little ridge line and all the way up to the summit there. So, yes, that's another adventure that we will attempt at some point. We're just scoping these out today. Curiously, I just noticed a little summit box up here at this high point on the Ridgeline Trail. And no, I'm not seeing any indication. I opened it up and uh, there are a lot of people that had signed it, but uh, no indication what this point is. So, yeah, Summit Box, we don't know what summit it is. And there you can see 
peak number four. Another perspective. By the way, the last high point with the Summit Box was actually off the main Ridgeline Trail. And um, there's a little cairn here. And then you would take a, um, a little deviation to that point where the Summit Box is and where you've got all the views up there. But now what we're gonna do is continue along the Ridgeline Trail and I can see it continuing way down in this area, which means there's a lot of descent and then followed by ascent again. Um, yeah, yeah, this is getting broken up. I don't know how far one can get on this ridgeline. Um, eh, who knows? There's Mount Wilson. Can we make it all the way to above Mount Wilson? We don't know. We're going to find out. Another high point, another perspective of some of these peaks. And there you can see is Mount Wilson. And then Indecision Peak. And here's what we call peak number five. Peak number four over there. And it looked like there was an approach, a potential approach to peak number four. Um, not from this perspective, but a um, little further down the south on this trail. Peak number five, though, um, yeah, here's another look at potential approach. And it does look like one could head off this trail. I see the trail skirting that high point just to the right of these rocks in the foreground. So, yeah, we will be up at that high point. And from that high point, you could descend down toward peak number five. And it looks doable from this perspective that one could get all the way out at least to that point. And it looked like there was a connector to the far point. So, yes, possible ascent or I say descent to the summit of peak number five from that ridge up ahead. The reason I'm on this side of the rocks is to try to shield myself from the wind a little bit. The wind is very strong. Um, the sun is hot, but the wind is very cold. It's, it's like you've got the dual thing happening of being frozen and burning at the same time. And there's looking down into the valley um, to the east and peak number four, peak number five, if you count that smaller peak at the base of Windy Peak as its own peak. Okay, onward. And as you can see, the Ridgeline Trail takes a pretty healthy dive right at this point between peak number five and another high point up ahead. And you can see, if you look carefully, you can see some of the trail below us. And there, again, is Mount Wilson. Another perspective between peak number four and peak number five. And it almost looks like somebody has ascended this area from below. Um, wow, what a feat that would be. Anyway, um, yes, you can see a little road down below. Who knows? And 
there we are looking back along the um, ridgeline trail and over toward Lovell Canyon. And then forward. And as you can see, yes, it's very broken up. You can see it continuing over in this direction. So we're going to skirt this next high point as we continue onward. And Mount Wilson. Right in the center there. Pretty beautiful, rugged area. Yeah, we'll catch this on a clear day in a future adventure, but this um, is just incredible, even on a hazy day. Another perspective of peak number five, and yeah, a lot of sheer drop offs here. Very beautiful rock formations all around us. And continuing up to, we'll probably make a little deviation from the main trail to the high point straight ahead. Okay, looking ahead in the Ridgeline Trail, it almost looks like this has been blocked off. We'll see in a moment but there's a little cairn here and here's a high point um, up ahead. We'll go up there, just see what we can see. It may be the approach to peak number five. And then you can see the area we have just traversed. If you look carefully, you can see the trail winding up that area we have ascended uh, vertically about a thousand feet but we have um, between the descents and ascents along this ridge line uh, you could probably add at least um, five or six hundred feet to that um, due to the rolling hills here so let's head up here see what we can see and then We'll continue on past these rocks and see why, you know, if they were there intentionally saying, do not continue, we do not know. So let's first go up to this high point. Okay, from this high point, we're looking straight over to peak number five. There is peak number four behind this pillar. And there's portion of the trail we have just covered along the ridge line and remember that little barrier we were looking at a moment ago on the trail wondering if the trail continues well the good news is that as we look around this direction yes the trail is definitely continuing so let's go up to this next high point and see what we can see and also what the terrain looks like as we proceed ahead and I think I'm going to just head right down below here to reconnect with the trail and then head up that direction okay heading along the ridgeline trail that's forward north this is south see Potosi Mountain right in the center very dim at this point and I'm going to take another deviation up to this high point but what I wanted to note is that yeah the trail continues you can see through the the trees here you can see where the trail actually continues onward so it looks like we're going to be heading down just a minute here yeah, we're going to be heading down this ridge ahead, down, down in that area, and maybe we head up. I, I think I see a trail at that next high point that you can see dimly, and um, now we're looking at straight ahead here. 
we're looking at indecision peak and a potential descent toward indecision peak. And there's Mount Wilson just beyond indecision peak. And then further up the Rainbow Mountains, um, I think one of the next ones is going to be, uh, we'll be heading toward Rainbow Mountain. So uh, it gives you a little I more idea of the lay of the land here and how this ridge line works let's let's ascend up to this high point and just see what we can see from there once again looking straight at peak number five here's peak number four and it looks like if there's an approach to peak number five it's going to be it's going to begin somewhere around the corner up ahead as we're heading along this ridge and then of course you can see indecision peak and mount wilson um, faintly a lot of rugged beauty between peak number four and number five and we'll return to this on a much clearer day and yes um, looking at potential approaches to peak number four now we see it from this area, and you can see there is a ridge. I don't know how, um, you know, approachable that is totally, but, um, yeah, especially without class four climbing. But um, yeah, look down in the canyon here. Wow, it just goes straight down and then over to peak number five. We'll see if there's an approach to peak number five. It, looks like there may be something less than class four um, approaching this peak so that'll be a future adventure and then looking around you can see mount wilson and indecision peak in the center here indecision peak is in the foreground mount wilson behind and further on down there would be rainbow mountain um, Juniper Peak, Bridge Mountain, and by that time we're on the western border of Red Rock Park. Upon rounding the next corner, looks like this trail is beginning to descend dramatically, and maybe there is an approach to peak number five. You can see the very tip of it there. We'll find out in a moment, and in the meantime, um, there's a few other rainbow mountains below us. Um, here's what I call peak number six. Maybe. There might be something even more between. And I still believe that yeah, we are looking at Indecision Peak and Mount Wilson. And again, we will see these on a clearer day. There's another ridge. But it looks like the main trail is heading down in this direction. So let's just see where this goes. Okay, a little more information on the route toward this peak that I'm calling peak number five. Um, if you started out at the southern end of the Rainbow Mountains. Um, we saw peak number one through four, here's five. And sure enough, it looks like this trail is continuing downward. Let's see if we can see another section of the trail. Yeah, right down here. So it looks like there is access to this peak here. So we'll um, check that out in a future exploration. But then I'm looking at these peaks ahead and there's a peak down here. 
which would be number six. Indecision Peak, I believe is this one here, would be number seven, and then Mount Wilson, number eight. And can one get from where we are right here to Mount Wilson? We don't know. Um, it doesn't look like there's a route through this terrain down here to arrive above Mount Wilson. I may have to do that from the north. And incidentally, if you look at the North Peak page on Las Vegas Area Trails, you can see uh, me starting out at the fourth, I mean, at the north end and heading south north end of the Rainbow Mountains, heading south. And we got above Bridge Mountain. Uh, did not go further, but, you know, we, we could have. And so maybe that is the access from the north. We'll find out eventually. Okay, I decided to actually scope out a little more of this trail that's heading toward what I'm calling peak number five. I'm sure I'll have a name by the time I look at maps and I'll flash it up on the video. But here you can see Windy Peak. And just the rugged area we are in. Very beautiful, rugged. Amazing rock formations. And it looks like the upper ridgeline trail, the southern portion that we've been on. Yeah, I just came down this um, scree trail, pretty steep. Not um, horrible, but yeah, steep from that high point up there. And um, the main trail that I've been on looks like it may actually end um, at this peak up ahead. We don't know. Maybe there's a branch that's going to go off in the direction toward Mount Wilson and Indecision Peak. We just don't know. But let's check this area out a little more closely. Continuing along toward peak number five, but noting that there is another split off trail heading to the left and down into this area below and who knows where this um, goes. It may actually continue on and continue along the ridge line. That would be nice because we see Indecision Peak and Mount Wilson directly ahead there. Um, we don't know. I'll come back and check that out. In the meantime, I think I'm going to stick with this more established trail and just see where it leads looks like it's leading toward peak number five and again I'll have the name of that by the time I edit this video okay still heading toward peak number five here the trail has pretty much uh, been wiped out by the rock and here there are some Karens that are beginning so we'll just follow the Karens for a while and see where they lead there's another one up ahead here. Not sure, but it appears the Cairns are giving out unless this right down here is one. And so we'll continue along. Um, in fact, I think I see another one right down in this area. So yeah, maybe we can follow the Cairns and where would we be headed? To this peak up ahead. So we'll see. It looks like there's quite a drop off here, but you never know. When you get to the edge of things, they may have more of a gradual approach to them. It's warming up a little bit, but the wind is still chilly. And getting more windy I might have to watch where I record from so that it's actually audible 
Okay, here we go. Okay, on the edge of this, it looks like there is no way across. Of course, a very good rock climber might attempt to descend um, there, but I don't think I'm going to do that. It looks like the big picture here would be more in this direction and then over to that ridge straight ahead across the ridge up to the top of this area or alongside it and then in fact I think I see a faint trail there and then on over to the summit so let's attempt that and looking down in this area guess what here is the town I believe it's the town of Blue Diamond right down in that little area and there's that would be Blue Diamond Mountain so let's let's head on up this way see if we can get over to that ridge um, I believe we'll see more cairns the cairns disappeared of course um, but if I were to take a route it would be in this direction up and around and then down that ridge and um, perhaps we'll see more cairns as we continue on and then of course after the ridge we'd be heading up to the summit area there and of course here's looking down this ledge definitely no passageway there and then looking around for perspective right through the trees there is Indecision Peak and Mount Wilson. Following the general direction that it looked like the land took, if there is a direction to the approach to the summits, there's another cairn that we just came across. I actually came from a little bit below, so I never saw that cairn. And guess what here is another cairn so we're back on some kind of track and looks like we continue up in this direction i don't see any cairns ahead but um, yes logically we would continue up here and then descend uh, that little ridge that would then lead to the summit little off trail again it looks like I need to be up there so that's not too much of a backtracking and then I would just continue on that ridge and then on up so let's go back down over here and get on this this hill in fact I see a I actually see a trail up there interesting okay yeah appears disappears we'll see more cairns probably once we get back on track but to look around yeah we are looking toward Griffith Peak things are getting a little more clear which is nice and there is Indecision Peak with Mount Wilson in the background and wow down in this direction there is pretty much all of Red Rock Park
and blue diamond over in this direction at least blue diamond mountain the town of blue diamond is down below us and then here's the summit we're checking out at this point so let's go ahead and just angle our way over to this next ridge and then take this ridge down to that little saddle and then upward as I thought we're going the right direction <laughs> doesn't seem like I've gotten very far um, I was looking for Cairns and and just look, following the natural topography here toward that summit and yeah Cairns appear then disappear there's some directly below here and you can see what looks like a pretty good path upward and then um, yeah looking around there's blue diamond the town of blue diamond behind it blue diamond mountain and in this direction red rock park and behind it the la madre mountains and so let's just complete the circle here those are the main viewpoints but wow what a beautiful area we're in it's just a matter of piecing things together there is the ridge that we traversed to get to this point the rainbow mountain upper crest ridge and the reason that we call it that is it's the ridge basically that goes above the rainbow mountains there's potosi mountain and here's peak number four and i know this peak's got to have a name <laughs> i'll find out peak number five we'll call it for right now so that's pretty much where we are making some discoveries okay we're getting close to our turnaround point but let's continue on a little further and see where we end up just descended this little class three slash four area a little beyond what i like to do but just wanted to get down here to see what was next making a point not to lower myself down anything i cannot um raise myself up <laughs> which would be a bad situation okay and so looks like we've got that little ridge right along here and then it's kind of looking like a trail up there so let's just go a little bit further okay just descended that bluff um, you can see there's a couple cracks that one could use to ascend um, you're definitely not going to be doing anything from below here but it looks as if there might be a way across to this next or this first summit so let's just continue here and see what we can find just for the records yes i could have come down this high point on the ridge um, but wow it's very exposed so i descended and took this lower approach just along the right side of the ridge and that worked out give you an idea where we are now super beautiful and what do you know a cairn right ahead of us and it looks like things get a little easier up ahead we'll go a little bit further just see where we end up well it looks like i could have headed up the north side or the south side of this little ridge um, i find myself on the south side and it looks um, a lot easier than um, where i came from <laughs> let's see 
Speaking of where I came from, yeah, ascending this area. And there are cracks there. And the thing is to get to the top up there and then work your way around to the right and head back to the ridge line up above. So that's the big picture. There's Potosi Mountain. So continuing on, let's just see where this area leads. It's showing a bit more exposure than I like, but uh, let's just see how it goes. Just headed down, crossed over to the north side. And yeah, this looks a lot better. So continuing up the ridge, on the north side. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, continuing around the corner and upward. Looks like this is the way to go. And there we're looking at the summit area right above us. And then a sweeping view around us. And I believe that's Indecision Peak right in the center. Not totally certain, but I think it is. And then off in the distance there is Griffith Peak. And then up above the Rainbow Mountain Upper Crest Ridge Line. Okay, continuing on up. I see a few cairns, which is nice. Okay, as you can guess, I'm back down here. Um, I hit a class four section and I decided to uh, turn around. I was just below the summit and I'll come back and check it out again. I think maybe next time the thing to do would be to take the right side of that ridge. I took the left side of the ridge and uh, that's where I hit the, the dead end there. Anyway, um, yeah. Beautiful afternoon. I'm past the turnaround point, so I want to ascend back up to the Rainbow Mountains crest ridge line up here. So we've got a little weaving around to do in these rocks to retrace our way back. But it's looking pretty good. Just taking my time, doing a little bit at a time, thinking through every position. Okay, onward. The next section is ascending this crack here. Everything's cleared up and so looking down this canyon between peak number four and five and then over this way toward Mount Wilson right behind Indecision Peak so yeah and we're heading back up to the the ridge line well it makes a great difference when things clear up Here's a shot straight toward the Las Vegas Strip. Now visible. It was in totally, it was totally invisible earlier. And then here's peak number five, which we shall find the name. And then looking over this direction, yeah, there would be the peak number six. Peak number seven is Indecision Peak. Peak number eight is Mount Wilson. And then we would have Rainbow Mountain 
and Bridge Mountain beyond. And I think I can almost see them up ahead to the left of Rainbow Mountain. I mean, to the left of Mount Wilson. And you can see a red mountain. I think that's Rainbow Mountain, a red peak. And then you can see a white peak beyond that. I believe that's Bridge Mountain. So now everything's becoming visible. Red Rock Park. So pretty awesome. Nice when you can see. Look down into the Lowell Canyon and you can see along those um, those hills there they look like mesas flat tops with red sides um, that's one of the edges of Lowell Canyon and there we have Griffith Peak and Harris Mountain, you can see the saddle between, and then just to the left of Griffith Peak, there is Charleston Peak. So yeah, a lot more is visible. And then, of course, in this direction, Mount Wilson, and to the left, the red is Rainbow Mountain, and beyond that there is a um, it's kind of a light colored mountain that would be Bridge Mountain. And ahead in the center is the Wilson Ridge. It's um, right before, um, in front of Griffith Peak and, um, and Charleston Peak. Over across the way there is the Wilson Ridge on the far side of um, Lovell Canyon. So all of these we will explore in time, but for today we're just getting the overview of the Rainbow Mountains Ridge Line Trail. formation I missed on the way up. Interesting, in the distance you can now see a portion of Lake Mead and the brown hill, darker brown, is Fortification Hill. It'd be to the right of that part of Lake Mead that's visible. <laughs> 